Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm CJ, and this is the Lenovo ThinkBook 13S Gen 4 Thin and Light Small to Medium Business Laptop, driven by the powerful but elusive Ryzen 7 6800U. This CPU was released months ago, and despite the laptop sporting this processor in many reviews online and in text, the number of models that you can actually find for sale in the wild with it are few and far between. In fact, two weeks ago, when I set out to find a 6800U powered ultra portable laptop, this was the only one available on the entire internet. I think one more has popped up since then, but it's significantly overpriced. So why are these low power processors so hard to find? And if you're in the market for one, is the Lenovo ThinkBook a good choice or should you wait longer? Let's find out. It's the money. When you think of Lenovo, most people think of their best-selling line of ThinkPads, but in 2019, Lenovo launched the ThinkBook line and slipped it into their lineup in the same category as their E-line of ThinkPads. However, personally, considering the name choice, the wedge-shaped design, the full aluminum chassis, the lack of a track point, I'm just going to call a spade a spade and say, this is Lenovo's attempt at a MacBook Air clone. There are even more similarities, but we'll get into that in a bit. First, let's go over the specs and features of the ThinkBook 13S. This is going to be a pretty detailed and comprehensive review, so as always, there are chapter markers, so feel free to skip around and come back and let the whole video play through later because you're sure to miss something important. The ThinkBook is an ultra-portable small to medium business or SMB class laptop. It measures 297 millimeters by 210 millimeters by just 14.9 millimeters thick and weighs in at about 2.75 pounds. The ThinkBook is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 6800U 8 core 16 thread CPU with a base frequency of 2.7 gigahertz, a max boost clock of 4.7 gigahertz, 16 megabytes of L3 cache, and a configurable TDP of 15 to 28 watts. In addition to the upgrade to Zen 3 CPU cores, this generation also gets an RDNA based Radeon 680M 12 core integrated GPU operating at 2200 megahertz. There's 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 6400 megahertz memory, a 512 gigabyte Gen 4 SSD, integrated Wi Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2, and it's powered by a 56 watt hour battery. For the feature overview, we'll start at the top and work our way down, starting with the 1080p webcam that's integrated into the bezel at the top of the screen and features a lens cover that does physically turn off the webcam. As far as quality, the cam does provide relatively clear and smooth video. However, the color accuracy is a bit on the magenta side as skin tones seem to be very red. The mic is also on par with comparable laptops, but doesn't provide any hardware based noise reduction or voice isolation. The webcam is not Windows Hello compatible. The ThinkPad has a 13.3 inch 16 by 10 IPS display with a WUXGA resolution of 1920 by 1200. While the resolution was adequate for a laptop in this class, the color accuracy was great, testing within 99% of the sRGB range. I found the max brightness of only 300 nits lacking, making the display difficult to see in brightly lit rooms or outdoors, even in the shade. It also affects the dynamic range, crushing blacks. Even with the bright Dolby Vision profile enabled, the separation of shadows and highlights in images was bad, making fine details pretty impossible to see. Even indoors in an indirectly naturally lit but still dim room, I found that 85% brightness was the lowest I could comfortably go. The power button integrates a fingerprint reader. I was able to easily set it up for Windows Hello login and quickly unlock the PC every time. The keyboard features 88 low profile tactile keys with less than a millimeter of travel. The keys have a fairly firm actuation and bottom impact. The long keys are well stabilized, altogether providing a fairly crisp typing experience. The only problem I had was the key seemed a little bit small to me, which is exacerbated by the rounded bottom design and took a little longer than normal to adjust to. A significant departure from the flagship ThinkPad models is the obvious omission of the very popular track point. Instead, we just have the small 165 by 63 millimeter touchpad 
It's a top hinge diving board style. While the multi gesture controls worked well, there were more than a few times when a single or double tap wasn't registered. And due to the small actuation area between the top hinge and the bottom left and right click areas, functions like click and drag or click and select was limited. However, the biggest weakness of the touchpad is while it does have effective palm rejection, I found that due to the size and proximity to the keyboard, I was constantly touching it with my thumbs, sending my cursor and subsequent text to some random point in my documents. This could probably be overcome with some modification to my typing style, but isn't a problem I have with other 13 inch laptops I've used. The speakers are provided by Harman Kardon and are bottom firing and feature Dolby Audio. They provide a fairly average sound stage, typical of a thin and light laptop. The cooling solution consists of a vapor chamber and heat pipes, leading to dual heat sink and fan assemblies, which draw cool air from the bottom and exhaust warm air from a vent behind the display. Getting into connectivity, the ThinkBook is equipped with a 40 gigabit per second USB 4.0 type C port. There's also an HDMI 2.0 output for connecting up to a 4K 60 hertz display and a 10 gigabit USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C port. On the left side, there's a Kensington slot, a 5 gigabit per second type A port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone jack. For wireless connectivity, there's an integrated Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2, and the Wi-Fi speeds do in fact max out my Wi-Fi 6 access point. My Bluetooth test was limited to my Soundcore earbuds, but they work flawlessly. As far as the rest of the connectivity, the additional USB 4 support with this generation of Ryzen processors is great and adds a lot of expandability options and is even compatible with some Thunderbolt devices, but not all. While I had no problems connecting to an external 1440p display, mouse, keyboard, ethernet, and even a high-speed Samsung T7 external SSD through my USB 4 dock, my Thunderbolt 3 dock wasn't recognized through USB 4 connection, but strangely it operated fine as a USB dock connected to the 3.2 Gen 2 port. However, this just makes it a really expensive solution that can be attained with a USB 3 dock for about a third the cost. Additionally, while the USB 4 port could power and drive my USB-C external display, it didn't work with my Thunderbolt 4 display, although it did try. Additionally, the ThinkPad was unable to recognize my Razer Core X Thunderbolt eGPU with either an AMD or NVIDIA GPU installed. So bottom line, while Thunderbolt is theoretically compatible with all USB 4 devices, USB 4 is not compatible with all Thunderbolt devices. Now let's get down to what most of you probably came here to see, and that's the performance. And because I don't like to test anything in a vacuum, I'll be comparing the performance to my framework ultra portable laptop that I had just upgraded to the Intel 12th gen i7 1260p, which is a 16 thread 28 watt CPU. So directly comparable to the 6800U. Now, this isn't going to be a full spec for spec feature to feature comparison of the framework to the Lenovo I planned on doing because some of my core subscribers pointed out that leaving out the new M2 MacBook Air in an ultra portable comparison is quite the omission, I think one person put it. So I ordered a brand new M2 MacBook Air and we'll be doing a three way comparison of the framework to the Ryzen and Apple Silicon competitors. So be sure to get subscribed to see that. Today, we're just looking at performance numbers. I ran most of the test in all three Windows power modes, unless there's just a single bar for each, which means it's just tested in best performance mode. And we'll start with raw CPU performance. In the Cinebench R23 multi-core benchmark, we see the Lenovo has about an 11% edge over the Intel laptop at the highest power draw, but then falls to the 1260p by 19% at the lowest power draw. As the 60, 800U performance drops by almost 32% as you go from best performance to best efficiency, while the 1260p only drops by about 5%. This is a theme you'll see in many of the tests, and that's due to the fact that while the AMD processor cuts power by over 52% from the highest to the lowest power mode, the Intel only cuts power by less than 25%. 
These results are replicated in another highly multi-threaded Blender render workload. However, if we switch from 3D render workloads to more 2D image compression, manipulation, and rendering, database coding, and text or PDF rendering multi-core workloads in Geekbench 5, the 6800U falls to the 1260p by just over 3% at performance. Moving into single core performance, the Lenovo is about 11% behind in Cinebench R23 and almost 13% down in Geekbench 5. Now, while those are synthetic benchmarks and not indicative of the types of workloads that this class of low power laptops is really designed for, they do give us an indication of how it should perform in other common workflows. Let's start with video editing and in the Underwriter Laboratories Premiere Pro test, which renders four sample videos using H.264 and H.265, 1080p and 4K footage, the type of footage from your typical mirrorless or DLSR camera, or even your cell phone, and here the Lenovo scores 21% higher. However, looking at the Puget Bench Premiere Pro test that incorporates more advanced footage like Red Raw 8K and 10-bit H.265, and also factors in timeline performance as well as export times, and here, the Intel with its well-supported QuickSync takes a 12% lead. Now, if we switch to DaVinci Resolve and one of my actual projects, a 10-minute 4K video using Blackmagic RAW H.264 and H.265 8-bit and some ProRes 422 footage, the Lenovo is the clear winner. I included the 11th gen framework scores here because the 12th gen failed to render this project and even the final output from the 11th gen was unusable. The Lenovo did it almost 13 minutes faster and the final product looked good. This is the first example of where the much more powerful RDNA 2 based iGPU really comes into play with the more GPU intensive DaVinci Resolve. However, although the Lenovo performed better, it still isn't good enough for me as in I couldn't realistically use it to accomplish my video editing workload. The timeline response is just not up to par. Of course, I wouldn't expect smooth playback of fully graded footage, but even by disabling all grades and effects, the timeline playback was way too slow with most frames dropped and scrubbing any distance on the timeline basically froze the editor up. So unless you're just working with 8-bit H.264 footage and it's just a part-time use case, this isn't the computer I recommend for video editing. Moving to the UL photo editing test, here the Lenovo falls behind by about 6.5% in some lighter Photoshop and Lightroom tasks, but in the more CPU intensive Photoshop Pugent test, the Lenovo performs about 27% behind the framework. However, for a reality check, that score of 706 isn't too far off from a desktop PC with a Ryzen 7 3700X that I've tested recently. But now let's move on to an SMP laptop's bread and butter, productivity, actual office work, and the UL productivity test that tests a bunch of times of common tasks in Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, the Lenovo trails the framework by about 37%. Now, having used this ThinkBook for almost two weeks now for pretty much all my productivity work, I can say that most things where my framework may technically be faster, I can't notice, like taking a tenth of a second longer to load or save a file, three tenths of a second longer to add an image, half a second longer to format an Excel table, but other things are noticeable. Taking 42% longer to export documents to PDF or 37% longer to export a presentation into video format or taking 8% longer to sort data in Excel. Those are tasks that I do a lot, so I did notice the difference. But I venture to say that most people moving from a four or five year old laptop to this are just gonna be blown away with the performance uplift you see. However, what I wasn't blown away with was the problems I ran into specifically when working in best efficiency mode. On multiple occasions, especially when working in larger Excel spreadsheets, the system would freeze or completely lock up. In one case, flashing to a white screen and requiring a hard restart. In fact, I was almost not able to run the productivity test in efficiency mode. Every time a third party application would open PowerPoint to be specific, it would crash the test. To get it to complete, I had to shut down every possible background service and application of which there are a lot, but we'll get into bloatware later. And I had to uninstall McAfee antivirus. 
Let's finish up with these performance metrics. In looking at 7-zip compression and decompression, the Lenovo and its AMD APU has a significant advantage. Finally, in productivity performance, I ran a couple code compile tests, a Firefox nightly build where the Intel machine was able to finish about 16% faster. However, in a longer Chromium compile, the two systems finished neck and neck with the framework taking only about 8 tenths of a second lead. Now let's move on to integrated graphics performance, and as you probably expected, AMD's RDNA-based Radeon 680M graphics takes a commanding 98% lead in the Geekbench OpenCL test. But while the Lenomo has almost doubled the performance at the highest power mode, the lead shrinks as you reduce the power. However, when you look at the 3D Mark Night Raid scores and focus on the graphics score again, we see a massive 70% win for the Lenovo, which isn't significantly reduced by reducing power. Now, this is where I typically recite my standard line about how thin and light laptops aren't for gaming, but these results may flip that on its head. Besides, this 6800U is in the same vicinity as the APU in the Steam Deck after all. So I started with the trusty old Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, and at 720p low preset, the average FPS is over 75%er than the framework's Intel. However, take a close look at the GPU bound percentage of 56 for the 6800U, and the GPU versus CPU frame rates in the bottom graph, the CPU frame time above the GPU frame time, especially for 44% of the time, translates into very choppy gameplay with more than just micro stutters. If we look at the frame times for just a few games, we see that the 6800U can drive very playable average frame rates. However, especially in the more CPU bound games like F1 2020 and Cyberpunk 2077, the 1% lows are very bad. That 8 FPS 1% low in Cyberpunk isn't a typo. There were full on one plus second frame freezes during the benchmark runs. This is the result of putting a relatively powerful GPU in a low power CPU. There just isn't enough power available for the CPU to be able to keep up with the GPU in high intensity real time rendering. I planned on doing some testing with my eGPU like I did for the framework a few weeks ago. But like I mentioned, the ThinkBook couldn't recognize the attached GPU. I tried an AMD RX 6600 and an NVIDIA RTX 3050 with no luck. Now I know an eGPU can work with this laptop. I saw an ETA Prime review and he was able to get his Sana eGPU with a 3080 Ti working, but again, Thunderbolt devices on USB 4 is hit or miss. So in reality, my long standing view on low power thin and light laptops still stands. They're not what you should be looking for if your primary focus is gaming. However, this will definitely deliver great gaming performance in less demanding games. World of Warcraft, Rocket League, The Other Wild, World of Warships, Civ 6, Forza, Minecraft, Roblox. People ask me about that one all the time. Dota, Skyrim, The Witcher. You get the idea. Those games will be highly playable on this laptop without having to nerf the resolution and textures to near 8-bit levels. So now that we saw the 6800U and the 1260P trade blows when it comes to performance and everything from 3D rendering to sending emails, let's look at one of the most important stats when it comes to an ultra portable laptop, in my opinion anyway, and that's power efficiency and battery life. And looking at the results of the Procyon battery life test in the light load video playback test, the Lenovo lasted almost four hours longer or 60% better battery life. And in the idle test, the Lenovo crushes the framework with almost double the battery life. This means of the two, if I'm going out for the day to the office or to the class, the Lenovo is actually ultra portable because I can just grab it and go while the framework, I need to grab the cable, have a place to store that, hopefully have a power source when I need it. Over the past couple weeks while reviewing this ThinkBook, I've routinely got over 10 hours of use out of it on a charge. Today, as I typed this script, which was yesterday, I hit about 11 and a half hours since it was unplugged and I was just at 21% battery. And I'd estimate that at about a 70 to 30 split work to standby time. So ultimately, I don't really mind if it takes eight seconds longer to export a PDF or if it takes a second longer to search up an email in Outlook if my laptop lasts four or more hours longer between charges. 
and with the efficiency comes cool and quiet operation the dual fan cooling solution is more than adequate i never saw the cpu temp pass 75 degrees and the fans only spun up to audible levels during heavy cpu usage like during 3d or video renders so that's the biggest pro of the thinkbook 10 plus hours on a 56 watt hour battery now let's talk cons and one of the biggest is the excessive amounts of bloatware from the McAfee antivirus to the huge amounts of Lenovo software and services running in all at idle between just Windows and all the Lenovo stuff running it uses 40 percent of the system memory that's almost six gigabytes of the available 16 and the extra software is for the most part completely redundant McAfee antivirus does have better malware detection than Windows Defender but not for the subscription cost and the Lenovo software is about worthless the Lenovo Vantage app that provides system updates and power modes Windows updates provides all those updates and from my testing the power modes built into Windows work better than the same profiles Lenovo provides now I did all the testing with everything installed out of the box like a normal consumer except McAfee which was still running when I did the battery life testing however if this was just my normal day-to-day -day laptop the first thing I would do is wipe the SSD and do a fresh install of my OS if for some reason you ever need tech support you can easily download and install the required Lenovo app for remote diagnostics my suspicion is this will also solve the performance issues I saw in efficiency mode you should also be able to reduce your background memory demand by at least half because 16 gigs is all you have and all you can ever have which brings me to my final con repairability and upgradability or the lack of it on this laptop the only removable and upgradable component is the NVMe SSD and I did confirm you can install another SSD and it will work and run your OS everything else even the Wi-Fi is integrated soldered on or taped down now there are some good reasons for this like there are no socketed memory solutions that can provide the performance gains and efficiency especially the IGPU performance that the LPDDR5 provides but there are also more nefarious reasons behind a lot of it I'll get into that more in the three laptop comparison video but for now know that there's only one configuration of this Lenovo ThinkPad and if you buy it that's pretty much all it can ever be so that's it guys this was a long one I made several conclusions along the way so no drawn out final conclusion other than taking into consideration all the positives and negatives I've outlined about this laptop overall specifically based on performance and power efficiency at under $1100 US I definitely think this is an excellent value and I would have no problem recommending it to someone looking for an ultra portable PC laptop let me know what you think of the Lenovo ThinkBook in the comments. While you're down there, be sure to hit that like and subscribe and hope to catch you in the next one.